Welcome class. Today I'm going to be presenting my A&E 1 for EDLL 4382 with Dr. Michelle Kaiser. For today's a and &E, I'm going to be focusing on student work through the cask of Amontillado. I'm going to be encouraging my students to make cross-genre connections between this short story and the play that we just finished reading, Hamlet. Let's begin. We're going to start with our bell ringer. So this is going to be a journal prompt, so go ahead and get out your writing spiral and a writing utensil. You're going to have five minutes, you'll time yourself, to answer one of these three questions. I'm going to read them out loud, but you can read the subnotes to yourself. Firstly, what purpose does revenge serve? The next question you could answer is why, why or when do we seek revenge? And finally, you can tell me a personal story where you sought revenge. And make sure to tell it in that narrative, chronological way. Keep in mind that I want no less than six complete sentences with complete sentences encompassing, encompassing, <laughs> encompassing proper grammar, language use, and mechanics. So go ahead and pause your video now, complete the journal, five minutes, time yourselves, and resume the video when you are ready to move on. Okay. Now that you've come back and we are listening to uh, each other discuss our journal prompts, um, you can discuss with someone at home, I'm just going to be thinking out loud. Let's start with this first one. What purpose does revenge serve? You can be talking about uh, what purpose Hamlet was looking for or what you look for in your own life, or maybe connect it to another text or another TV show from your time. We could um, focus on these things. What is the final goal? That's really what I wanted you to answer in your journal prompt. The second question I was really looking for are there different levels of revenge? So when do we seek revenge? If someone steals a pen of yours, what kind of revenge does that justify or qualify? And then if someone murders your father and marries your mother, that is obviously a very different level of revenge there. So I wanted you to be focusing on when do we seek it and what levels are there? Finally, if you told me a personal story, I would be happy to read it. When you finish all of today's work, you will bundle it all in one email and send it to me. So I will be happy to read those and we will discuss them tomorrow in class. Let's move on. So we talked a lot about revenge in our journal prompt because that is what our focus is going to be on today. We're talking about revenge in the cask of Amontillado, which is an amazing piece. Uh, let's focus on our objectives for a second. Let's read the I can statement together. I can compare and contrast two pieces of text, taking into consideration the context of each. I can also figure out the meaning of new words using context clues and research sources or reference sources. Finally, we can work with others and discuss on my, our ideas. So we're going to be using the objectives in a bunch of different ways as we go through our agenda. We've already finished the bell ringer. Now we're moving on to a recap of theme and genre. You might have some previous knowledge, but I'm going to shed a little bit more light on it. Next, we're going to do our Say Something demonstration where we'll have a guest speaker. I will demonstrate and then you will put it into practice during paired reading. Finally, we'll come back to the video for our closure where we will summarize what we learned and I will explain the homework tonight. So let's go ahead and get started with our theme and genre recap. Cask of Amontillado. It was written by Edgar Allan Poe in 1846, which may seem like a long time ago, but there are a lot of common themes that are just present no matter when you live. We're going to talk first about genre. So a genre, there are categories of literature or art or music or TV shows that are characterized by form, style, and subject matter. So let's take one of these science fiction. That is an example of a genre. When you think of the science fiction genre, you probably think of aliens and mad scientists. You think of spooky ethereal music. Those are all genre markers that tell us what we're watching or reading is a science fiction story. Let's look at a non-example. Non Whereas these are very concrete umbrellas that different building blocks fit into, simple is not a genre. If I were to describe to you, oh, I saw a simple movie the other day, you don't have those genre markers and those recollections that tell you that that is a genre. So instead, simple is just an adjective. Love and family are both words that seem like they might be genres, but actually aren't. Those are themes, which we'll look at in the next slide. Instead of love, you would use the genre romance, or maybe romantic comedy, a rom-com in movies. So the, let's look at our, our focus on examples of different genres that we know and we love. What similarities do you see within a genre? Remember those genre markers that tell you what to look for. If we're focusing on thriller, horror, and mystery genres, take a second to think about what genre markers you know in your head fall into these categories. 
Some of the things you might said might have said were a suspenseful tone, focusing on crime, uh, lots of sensory language, things that make you feel creeped out. All of those are genre markers that fall into this. And some of those might be ringing a little bit true to you, because Hamlet falls into a genre that uses some of these same techniques. So as you're thinking about this, I want you to think about what characteristics make you think that Hamlet is in this thriller genre. Or if you disagree, what genre do you think it is and what markers are there that tells you so? Remember that I'm not focusing just on thriller because uh, in one piece of text there can be multiple genres. Let's move on to theme. So themes are how the author portrays a social truth. Let's focus on that word social truth for a second. A social truth is something that's universal for everybody. Everybody has encountered it. So that could be love, that could be war or conflict, that could be revenge, as we've been looking at today. Um, it's an underlying message. What is the author telling you about this social truth? So if we think about these social truths, um, if we think about these social truths, we want to use the concept, concept is opinion. We're going to use this format to talk about different types of literary themes. So following this, following this structure, we have love is eternal. Think about Romeo and Juliet. Love is eternal. War is pointless. War, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Uh, death is not the end. That's one that is often followed a lot. In Hamlet, you might say death is mysterious or death is important, death is impactful. Those are different themes that the author is telling us through our theme, which sounds like I'm being very repetitive, but it will make sense in just a second. Again, remember that books have multiple themes. So Hamlet can also have these other types of themes. Themes don't have to follow the structure of concept is opinion. Instead, you can use cliches, you can use other social truths, like good triumphs over evil, or coming of age. As we're looking at Hamlet, coming of age is very important because he's transitioning from this young angsty teenager into the king that Denmark needs, or so we thought. So these are the different themes and the way that theme applies to Hamlet. So we're going to take these two, genre and theme, and we're going to move on to our say something. So say something is our daily strategy, and it's one of my personal favorites because honestly, you just say something. It's wonderful. So, go ahead and open your Cask of Amontillado short story. Um, you'll see that I have the different paragraphs broken up, each with an arrow, and I have a section for you to be able to insert what you said and what your partner said. So you're going to watch our demonstration first, then you're going to pause the video and find a partner to complete this worksheet. I already have a partner. I would like to introduce a guest speaker, Austin. Hello there. Hello, class. So we're going to be looking at or demonstrating our say something. And as we start, I want to just point out a few examples and non-examples. So our example here is you can make a connection. You can make a connection to another text, like Hamlet, or to a personal story, like a time you saw revenge, or to the world, like a meme or whatever y'all see. You can activate prior knowledge of things you know about Poe, things you know about the genre. You can make a comment on a character or setting. You can ask a question and provide a possible answer. We're not just asking questions. We're thinking deeply and connecting to the text. Does that sound good? Yes. What I don't want from you, especially, is making a joke or just stating an opinion. You wouldn't just say, oh, I think Montressor is cute, because that has no connection to the text. You're not thinking deeply. So I want you to stretch yourself to really make say something, say something that makes sense to your partner. So we're going to read out loud this first section, and then we're going to do an example of a say something together. So, are you ready? Yes. I'm going to read out loud the first paragraph. <clears throat> the thousand injuries of Fortunato I had borne as best I could, but when he ventured upon insult, I vowed revenge. You, who so well know the nature of my soul, will not suppose, however, that gave utterance to a threat. At length I would be avenged. This was a point definitely settled, but the very definitive with which, this, with which it was resolved precluded the idea of risk. I must not only punish, but punish with impunity. A wrong is unredressed when retribution overtakes its redresser. It is equally unredressed when the avenger fails to make himself felt, as such to him who has done the wrong. It must be understood that neither by word nor deed had I given Fortunato cause to doubt my goodwill. 
I continued, as was my end to smile in his face, and he did not perceive that my to smile now was at the thought of his immolation. So we're gonna say something. This is the moment to say something. So you notice I have a table open for you to write your responses. I'm gonna start. Okay. So if I'm saying something, I'm gonna start with, um, I'm gonna ask a question about our genre. So this is very creepy. The words that we have here speak to something that's just, just bad mojo going on. Do you have an example of like what makes it so creepy? Uh, definitely, uh, at the very end of the passage, uh, smile now was at the thought of his Im uh, immolation. Mm -hmm. uh, it gives off, uh, implies a, a nefarious deed is about to happen. Okay, so nefarious, I like that word. So something very evil, yes. evil the word. And if you didn't know what immolation was, I also have attached a reference sheet. So here you have the word, these old timey words. And if the word is here, which immolation is, you can look at the definition. Words that are still in our lexicon today, you'll have to look up yourself. So if you come across a word that you don't know, you're going to want to use your vocabulary strategies to find out through context clues or through a reference source, like a dictionary or a smart device, what that word means. That's going to be up to you. So that was very good. So I said something and you responded. So now, do you have something else you can say about this passage? Uh, just the, the tone of it uh, is uh, gives off that creepy vibe and... Uh, just in general, the, those foreign words, especially since nowadays it was written in 1864? 1846. 1846. Yes. Uh, yeah, it, the, the use of those foreign words nowadays gives it a, an alienistic property. Okay, so very alien, very foreign, something that you know is meant to intimidate you. I really yeah. like that. So that was a good example of us each saying something, which is what you're going to write in these two paragraphs. We have one more example filled out on your worksheet, but the rest is going to be up to you. So thank you. You can have a seat. Yes. Um, now you're going to go ahead and pause this video again, and you are going to find someone to read with. You are going to do a paired reading. So like I said, you're going to pause. You're going to look at this, the different things you can say. You're going to pull aside someone, maybe your family at dinner, maybe a friend over the phone, and you're going to read out loud and then say something. Could please come back to this video or resume when you have finished the assignment. So now that you have come back, you have finished your Say Something assignment, I just want to say I'm very proud of you. I don't know how any of you did, but I know you're going to do fantastic when we talk about it tomorrow. Speaking of tomorrow, let's move to our summary, let's move to our closure, and then I will explain our homework assignment for tonight. Let's start with the summary. I'm going to read this out loud straight off the PowerPoint. If you would like to join along at home, you are more than welcome to. The Cask of Amontillado is a popular companion piece to Hamlet because they share similar themes and genre markers. Remember when we talked about theme, the theme in both is probably going to be revenge, but there are multiple themes you can explore. And the genre markers, both of them are super creepy and deal with crime. Think about what genre that is. This famous short story is an intriguing example of wrathful revenge versus loyal revenge like we see in Hamlet. The reason I'm comparing and contrasting Hamlet and the cask of Montiota right now is for your homework assignment. But let's think <coughs> one more time about our daily strategy. So you just finished your say something assignment. This is our daily strategy because speaking with a partner while reading makes us stop and check for comprehension. That's very important during the reading process. Today, you found out that you can compare and contrast two works within the same genre, that you can figure out the definitions of new words using either context clues or reference sources, and you can work in partners. That, that collaboration and discussion is very important. So now, you're gonna take your story and what we learned today, and you're going to fill out your homework sheet, which should be attached to the video. Your homework tonight is going to be finish the accompanying sheet and be ready to talk about your answers in class tomorrow. The worksheet is pretty self-explanatory. You'll be able to figure it out. But mostly I'm looking for you to compare and contrast within this genre, the theme of revenge, the theme of family ties, the theme of wrath versus loyalty, all of those different things. Take these big ideas and boil them down into short paragraphs that we can share with the class tomorrow. Thank you very much. I don't think I said my name at the beginning. My name is Daniela Pauling, and I hope you have a wonderful weekend.